Oh my goodness. Um, give a round of applause for, for Reasonable Doubt. That's crazy. Absolutely stunning work. Um, how y'all doing? My name is Valerie Complex. I am an, uh, thank you. <laughs> I'm an uh, assistant editor and film writer at Deadline Hollywood. And I'm here to, uh, you know, talk a little talk about Reasonable Doubt and, and get y'all informed about that so we can get excited about seeing the whole series. I'm going to introduce some folks who are here today. And uh, first up, I'd like you to meet uh, creator, showrunner, and executive producer, Ramallah Muhammad. Uh, next, I want to introduce executive producer Larry Wilmore. <laughs> next, I'm going to introduce Jax herself and Yatsi Coronaldi. <laughs> and next, I'm going to introduce McKinley Freeman. That was that was some that was some crazy shit. I'm sorry, this is <laughs> for uh, uh, you know my apologies for the cursing, but I just had to say it. That was like <laughs> took me on a journey, okay. you know. And I, I I wanted to ask, like, how did you conceptualize the story for the show? Like, there's all of these different layers to it, especially in the first episode. So, how did that all come together? So the, um, the series is kind of inspired by a woman named Sean Hawley, who's a defense attorney in Los Angeles. Um, and uh, Larry Wilmore and Carrie Washington, who were executive producers on the project, they came to me wanting to do a show kind of based on her life. Um, and Sean is very interesting because she's always on um, a side of the law that you don't expect. She has a very interesting perspective and unique perspective on, on that. So we kind of took that idea of, of that part of the show and then, you know, Sean is, her life is very, I'm going to say boring, but in a good way, because she's very happy and <laughs> there's no drama. Um, but I was like, well, you know, I don't want to see that on television. So I added, you know, a whole backstory and different life and, and mess and, and soap and all that stuff. Um, but Sean and I are both from Los Angeles. The show takes place in um, Baldwin Hills, which is where I live, and I grew up in Windsor Hills, and, uh, and so I kind of brought that L.A. element to it as well. So you would say you used L.A. and sort of that environment as a resource for, for the story and for putting it all together? Yeah, and to me, I just, you know, being from L.A. and the kind of friends that I have, I feel like I haven't really seen a, a black woman on television who's shown as uh, smart, but also a little, uh, you know, a little, little ratchet in them. <laughs> Uh, and a little sexy. Like, I feel like those are the people, I, the black women I know, they're professionals, but they also, I mean, I'll sing, I'll sing a hardcore Snoop song in my car <laughs> um, and know all the words. Um, but I wanted to show that. I wanted to show the different layers that we all have. And also, her friends are really important in the show, too. Friendships. I have long-term friendships as well. So I feel like I haven't really seen that on television. So I wanted, you know, to see a black woman who kind of look like me and my friends, basically. And did she break down, like, when you guys were having the discussions and you were putting this together, did she break down how, what it was like to be a woman and what it was like to be a black woman sort of navigating the legal field and all the things she had to deal with going on their way up and, and things like that? Yeah, I actually, I actually shadowed Sean, like, kind of followed her for the day. She's amazing. She wakes up, like, super early. <laughs> she was like, meet at my house at seven. And I was like, what? <laughs> um, and she was already like, she had worked out. She had her heels on. She was like ready to, you know, she dropped her kid off. She went to court. She did multiple cases. I was just trying, and she did it all in heels and I just couldn't believe it. But, you know, then she was just talking about, yeah, like working in a mostly white firm, which I think most of us, you know, can relate to um, working in, if you are some kind of professional. I mean, you know, we're only 12% of the population. So, you know, we're going to mostly be in in spaces where we are, you know, the only ones. So, um, you know, Sean talked about that. I've been in those spaces. So, 
you know, that experience too was important to show, but not necessarily be preachy about it, but just kind of, you know, show it the, the way it exists, the way that we experience it. Thank you. And, and my next question is for, for Larry. I'm wondering, when you were reading through the scripts and the story, um, what was the sort of connection that you made with the material that sort of drew you in and made you want to be a part of the project? Well, I actually helped develop the story, so we were a part of it before there was a script. You know, it was uh, meeting Sean Holly as, as she said herself, and just talking with Sean. <laughs> You'll get in debates with her about it. You can't believe the sides that she takes, because she's on the side of justice. Not even necessarily truth as much as justice. And I was like, well, what does that mean? Well, that's what law is all about. You know, how does someone get justice? You know, it's a very interesting word. And to me, to dramatize that, as, that you know, that that's what the character is seeking is that is something that's kind of novel. And how do you do that? And how do you show the disparate parts of that person's life? Where are the other parts in their life where they're seeking a certain type of justice? And that kind of storyline kind of carries us through the season in very unexpected ways. Because most of the time we think about truth, but truth can be very black and white. Justice is a little different. Doesn't always, doesn't always show up in the way that you think it will. And, and this, this, this episode that we saw kind of shows that because it shows Jack sort of, you can hear it in the dialogue that, that, she, that she says. And that's another thing, like the dialogue is so realistic and down to earth. Like I talk like that with my friends. I'm from New York. So we, we, we talk, it's a little bit worse than that. Cause you know, like LA is one way and New York, we do it, you know, a different way, but it's all the same sort of language. And so like, <laughs> Where did you pull that from? Because I was like, man, I swear we, I just said something like that yesterday. Like, <laughs> so how did, you know, how did you guys come up with the specific dialogue to sort of connect with the story? Um, I, I just believe in writing the way people talk, like the way I talk. Um, you know, obviously if I have to write something like for story purpose or, or whatever it is, but um, yeah, I just like, you know, one character says Mark ass buster, I'm from LA, like that's what you say. <laughs> um, so I'm like, that's what she's gonna say. Uh, so, so yeah, so I just, I just think about like once, for me the most important part is doing the character work, because once you really know the characters, and you just have them react to people. And you know, in this scene with Emiatsi and Shannon, who plays Chanel, like people also they say one thing but do another, right? So, so Chanel's character, you know, she's going to be like talking about her husband, but at the same time, be like, "Well, girl, let me let me tell you about your relationship." Like that's how people. I, so it was really important to me to show the hypocrisies and the different ways that people actually act versus you know a character who like always does the same thing and does the same. Like people don't do that like you know people will do heroin and then go to church the next you know it's like you know like it's like what like you're but that's how people are they're walking hypocrisies so that's what you see in the show and sure. i've never in the history of television seen a black mom leave a kid's door and go this nigger <laughs> <laughs> and Emmy asked me, we had you do so many takes of that too <laughs> it was hilarious but her tone is just perfect with the way that you're in the corporate world but she carries herself authentically in that you know she does such a beautiful job of it always being authentic with that. Yeah, for sure. And speaking of characters, this is for both uh, Amyati and, and McKinley. What is it about your character's sort of emotional journey from the first episode to the last episode of the season? You know, when you're getting these scripts and you're, and you're sort of reading them, what connection did you sort of make to your, to your characters? And do you relate to them at all? Yes, <laughs> I relate to Jax because she does not have it all together. You know what I mean? That's one of my favorite aspects of this woman. You know, I know many women like that, you know, like Rama was saying, and that's real life. You know, she's a bit messy, you know, um, but Jax likes to be in control, and I think that's where she starts. She likes having things all together, um, so it's difficult for her to even navigate this situation here um and she, she got lots of situations she has <laughs> lots of situations you know but listen don't situation. don't start don't even don't okay, even start I, I waited long enough but i'm I'll, I'll don't going. even start <laughs> see this is what i'm talking about this is what i'm talking about this is what i'm talking about 
what this is. You know, name. she don't know what to do with, with this. My name was in the So, question, though, so. anyway, <laughs> I'm going to continue. Are you guys shooting this? Yeah, this is the show. See what I'm saying? What I'm saying? See what I'm saying? So, she's trying to figure it all out. And so, you'll, you'll go on this journey with her to see her from the beginning thinking she's in control, thinking she's still in control of this new dynamic, realizing, you know what, this is a whole different beast, along with other things that she has to figure out how to navigate. She's in a new space in her life, and she's not used to not being in control in that kind of way. And so that's kind of the journey that you, you see her go on. And you may not always agree with her choices in the way that she, she does to get to where she thinks she needs to be. Yeah, you may not always agree with her choices, like she said, but um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, for, 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 uh, for me, um, it was kind of boiled down to two things. For me, first thing is the human part, which is the thing that connects us all. Um, and I think the responsibility that I approach this job with is I, when brothers watch this show, I want to make sure they see themselves. Because I think often, um, especially when it comes to like positive depictions of black men going to work, taking care of their families, doing what they can to make it work, we don't see that enough. So for me to be able to to be able to portray to be able to you know support that character in that regard is awesome. Um, my man right here said, "Yeah, bro, thank you, bro." He said, "He said that's right, King. It's 2022. I appreciate you, fam." Um, <laughs> the other thing is love, though, because love is such a complicated thing, um, and we all say the things that we will or won't do, and we ultimately find ourselves doing those things for the for the people that we love. So I think for me the journey was really um, learning how to love the person that you say you love, because saying it is one thing and figuring out ways to make it work despite how complicated it is, is something completely different. And also for the both of you, is there anything that you can give the audience that would sort of put into words the trajectory of what the characters go through from the beginning to the end of the season? Like, what can people expect from your characters? If you could, like, tell us a little something. Drama. Okay, well, yeah, right? Drama. You know what I mean? A bunch of drama. <laughs> Especially between, you know, between the, the, the two of them, you know, it's, it's... Between the two of who? It's, it's... <laughs> Marriage is difficult, you know, for all the people out here who are married, you know, marriage is, is not easy. It's beautiful, it's wonderful, but it's, it's, it's just not easy. And you get to see these two people trying to figure it out. What will it look like? You know, they have this family, this beautiful family, successful careers, but how can we get to the place where we used to be? And so you'll see that journey play out um, over, over the season. And, you know, it, it may not play out in ways that you'd expect, but it, it's, it's one of my favorite parts of the show. It's one of my favorite parts of the show because I love how it exhibits marriage and the difficulties and the beautiful aspects of it. Yes, and also underlying it for me always was I didn't want to do something that was, um, you know, tr about our trauma in some mm -hmm. way, you know what I mean? That something that was rooted in, like, you know, McKinley's saying, like, something human, right? Like, of course this is a black couple, but it's not, their issues aren't because they're black yes. or what, their issues are human issues, and they have to, you know, we, we have, there's an episode that is from Lewis's perspective, um, and so for me, you know, like McKinley was saying, the black female characters were just as important as the black male characters because for me, I also wanted to make sure that I was representing all of us in a very different way and, see, and seeing different kinds of black people uh, get to exist <laughs> like we get to do, um, you know, in just various ways. And this is for all of you. What was it like working, you know, with Kerry Washington who directed the first episode? Um, this, the, this seems to be her wheelhouse, and so, um, you know, I can, I can recall a little, you know, scandal came up a lot in my head and everything like that, and, and she has a really, I can see the influence there, so can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so actually, um, so I was a writer on Scandal and Little Fire, so I've known Carrie now for about 10 years or so. Um, so we just, you know, we kind of built like a slow friendship over the years, and she brought me over to Little Fires. Um, and then uh, when this project came up, when her and Larry were talking about it, she approached me with this. And so it's just been like a natural progression. And then I kind of just bullied her to direct it. <laughs> I basically begged her, because she'd be so good with 
um, the other actors, and she just had a good, you know, she's very smart and very creative. Um, and I was like, yeah, I think you, sh you can do this. And I mean, if she were here, she would probably say, well, I don't, I was, I don't want to do it because the project meant so much to me and I don't want to like ruin it, but I'm so glad she did. She did such an incredible job and, and she's such a great actor and I think the actors appreciated having her, you know, talent and, and you know, being able to give notes and knowing as someone who's done it <laughs> before. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's what made a difference because, you know, we all know Carrie Washington, you know, the actress, and seeing that translate into her being a director, it just was such an ease, you know, there was a, a shorthand there. She already knew certain moments. She knew things that were missing. She knew things that, that could be added without the, without the difficulties of trying to explain how to get there that a lot of directors have, you know? So she just had that easily, and it made it so much fun. It was, I had the best time working with Carrie as a director. Yeah, for me it was great because we've been working on it for such a long time, and Carrie and I have had so many conversations about it, you know, wanting to do this smart legal show, this black woman with this multi-dimensional life, and all those things. So. It's all the conversation that go into making a show. She's so humble and so generous. But when we were actually making it, we both would push each other when we would just talk privately too, saying, we gotta keep raising the bar. <laughs> not good enough, <laughs> you know, we gotta do this, you know, and we would, but she, in, she reinterprets that towards the people she's working with very humbly and, and in a very generous way. But we're both fierce about making sure that the thing that we're putting out has a certain quality, you know, that we're gonna, be fierce with that and protect it, you know, and she's so great to work with in that way, you know. And it was just, you know, it was really good to see all of those beautiful black faces in there and sort of being represented um, in, a, in a smart way because we are multidimensional and we do not exist in a vacuum and we can be lawyers and we can be doctors and things like that on, on television and in real life, believe it or not. And so I think that, that, I think that that's really um, important uh, to portray. And I guess my last question is if you can describe the show in like one word, what word would that be? Oh, yep. Making it difficult. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I've been asked this question before and I probably should have an answer for it. Um, I usually just say blackity black black, but that's, I guess, like three words. I don't know. I should have, yeah, that works. Okay, great. Uh, do you have I mean, I would, say it's, I would say it's a ride for sure. I think there's um, the cool thing about the world they've created and the writing and the talented people in front of behind the cameras, it's really, uh, I, I'm really looking forward to people's reactions to what we've created. And I think the really inspiring thing is that Carrie, Larry, Pilar, Ramla, Pete Chapman, everybody created an environment um, that allowed creative people to be creative safely. And I think being able to have the courage to fail and fail again and fail again, and I think that's, that's, that's such an inspiring place to be. So you know, hopefully that comes across and people dig it. So well, what was your word? He, he said why. You see what I'm dealing with? <laughs> you see this? You see this? <laughs> I guess it technically, I said a ride. He's, 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 he's said a ride. So, okay. yeah. But McKinley, I'm glad you said about the behind the scenes because one thing I will say is, so we had an all black writer's room. Mm -hmm. We had all black directors. Um, uh, obviously, Carrie and Larry are executive producers. Yeah, are black. Um, our costume designer was black, our line producer was black, the guy who did our color timing was black. Um, it was very important to me. Our sound, our sound mixer, operator was black. our sound yes. operator, um, wow, our gaffer. gaffer. Like, yeah. Wow. Um, so it was very important to me that, uh, that just, it wasn't just in front of the camera mm -hmm. that you saw us, but also behind the scenes. Um, because, you know, I wanted to make sure, like, when you walk on a set, is you the PA the PA is black the showrunner is to the showrunner and mm -hmm. there's a diversity and there's and everyone's going to be treated a certain way and, and there's going to be a shorthand the actors are going to feel mm -hmm. comfortable and also um, you know Derry and um, TJ our kids even when I was talking to their parents I said it's I want the kids to come on set and see people mm -hmm. that look like them mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. they could 
feel comfortable and be like, okay, there's, whether they want to continue acting or whatever they want to do, like, there are roles for them. They can be mm -hmm. a director. They can be a producer. Um, because director until of you, photography. Yeah, a DP, yeah. Black so woman. A black woman. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, so, so it's very, it, that was very important to me more than anything. Um, and so I was really happy to come on set and feel that love and see people who are really good mm -hmm. at their jobs right. who haven't had a chance to have, you know, a big show like this. McKinley, we were talking about the moment where there was a really important scene, uh, and so black director, black band director, here I come in, <laughs> McKinley is there, black writer, and we're having a discussion about this black man without having to interpret that, mm -hmm. you know, and how are we going to represent this properly? And it was so nice to have that conversation. Absolutely. It was, it was, we could hit the ground running because we didn't have a lot of time anyway. So yeah. we could we could just really speak to the point, which was what we want what we want to put on the screen. We want to make sure brothers like yeah. brothers like you respond to being like that's real to me. You know what I'm saying? So that conversation and that environment is is extremely special. And uh, Larry, Jason, Pete, I mean everybody. It's it's like yeah. it's really been such a special special you know yeah. journey. So. And that's what made the difference for all of us being on set. We could feel it, you know, and then it, it feels like y'all felt it, you know, in the room. And, you know, for you to say you speak like that, you know what I mean? Because it's the, the realness comes across. And that started with Ramla. She's the one who made sure from the beginning she wanted to have all of these black folks in all of these different arenas because right. it was going to make the difference. And so it was her pushing for that. That is why you get something like this, you right. know? So it's, it's because of Ramla. That's right. right. So I guess, um, <laughs> so I guess, I guess that's why my one would be, niggas. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, cause I was sitting in my seat over there. I was like, these stripping. Like, <laughs> you know, I was, I, I related to it so much because mm -hmm. There are parts of myself in there that, I mean, I don't have that much drama in my life, but I was like, you know, I hope not. I hope not. But I would, you know, but I could see that being a, a black woman in an environment, because as a journalist, it, you know, it can be hard, especially when you show up and, you know, you're the, you're the only one there. You have to speak for yourself and you have to stand in your truth. And that's what it seems like Jax definitely does, and that was a part of it that I really, really liked the most. It's just people standing, standing in their truth. So uh, let's give a round of applause because that was a bomb. I really loved it. Um, is there, uh, oh, it premieres on September 27th. I am totally Oh yeah, September excited. 27th on Hulu. The first two episodes will premiere and then they'll um, be one a week. Maybe two at first? Two, yeah, the first two. And okay, and then one a week. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm like, what can I say? I don't like getting in trouble, y'all. I'm just saying. <laughs> Thank you all so much for for being here and showing Thank us you. your work. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.